Hey guys, it's Vic with High Desert Man, and in 1994, Evan Darnell started a club in college as kind of an opposition to a vegetarian club that had been started. It was called the Red Meat Lovers Club. Today, we are smoking Red Meat Lovers by Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, Steve Saka. Stick around, we'll talk about this cigar. Red Meat Lovers Club is not only the name of South Florida's most carnivorous fraternity of meat eaters, not only the 12th cigar in Smoke Inn's famed microblend series, not only a mind-bending collaboration with one of the hottest names in the world of craft cigars, Steve Saka, but it's also the first ever premium smoke to be intentionally blended to pair perfectly with a robust steak dinner. This cigar comes from my good buddy and my friend Kevin Shahan over at Cigar Prop and uh, he he just sent me some cigars that I hadn't tried before and uh, so th Kevin thank you very much bro I'm very appreciative of this it's cool looking smoke um, it's got just a, it's got the band that uh, Red Meat Lovers Club uses for their logo and stuff Smoke In. Uh, back around 2010, I believe, they started their micro blend series, and it was basically just nothing, nothing in particular common among the cigars so far as the theme goes, um, but just some uh, custom blends that would put together, uh, be put together just for them by different manufacturers uh, on a limited edition release sort of thing. The Red Meat Lovers is the latest one. I think there was about three or four years, I think three years, between uh, the last one and this one coming out. This one came out in January of this year. And uh, if you've seen, uh, I'm sure you've seen Kevin's video, he got to sit down and, and have a good smoke with Steve Saka. And they, um, he went to one of the Red Meat uh, launch, I think it was the launch event that he went to. So it comes from Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. It's a collaboration between him and the Red Meat Lovers Club, which is a South Florida-based club. Uh, started in 1994, as I said, by Evan Darnell. To um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Just uh, there, there was a vegetarian club that was started, and he thought, "Wait a minute, we uh, we got to balance the scales here." And he started the Red Meat Lovers. It's limited to 5,000 cigars packaged in bundles of 10. And I actually had a chance to buy uh, a bundle of these uh, when I was in Florida, uh, well, earlier this year. And, and I passed it up because it was too new. Some of the stuff I heard online, I, I was just up in the air. I wasn't sure. Uh, and so, but I've been wanting to try it. And uh, so I get to do it now. The cigar is a hefty and presumably hearty bold to cut through and pair with a good steak. So that's what I'm suspecting from this. The factory, Nicaragua American Cigars SA. Wrapper is US Connecticut Broadleaf. Binder is Mexican San Andreas Negro Oscuro. Filler is Nicaraguan and US Pennsylvania. It is, the Vitola is a Toro Gordo, which is uh, 56, a six inches by 56. So uh, I've got my trusty cigar prop ring gauge here. Let's see, 56. Hmm, that's what the website said, but that is, Kevin's gauge says it's a 54. Yeah, it doesn't fit a 52. Kevin's gauge says it's a 54. Uh, smoke in, so let's see. No, they say it's a 56 as well. So, somebody's wrong, and Kevin has assured me that his, uh, his gauge is spot on within a couple hundred thousands, uh, because that's how it was cut. So, I'm trusting Kevin's device. It's got a nice little pigtail on the end here that's kind of cool. Mmm. Mmm, the draw is good. The draw is real good. Today I'm pairing it with a uh, cold brew, Marimas, Mar uh, Marimas Marmia cold brew. Just 
something different. I've got my water beverage here, but I wanted uh, I, I wanted to see how the coffee would uh, pair with this cigar and how this would cut through that. Okay. <coughs> it's got some spice in the nose, that's for sure. The initial couple draws to me uh, aren't that great. They're, let's see. The flavor is just a little bit bitter and uh, but but there's good smoke output I'm getting a lot of char right now it definitely would cut a steak it this uh, really comes across like it would uh, cut well with a steak the best cigar I ever had from a steak cigar pairing ever in all the years I've been smoking. This was back in 2008. It was very shortly after after uh, La Flor Dominicana came out with the chisel and the uh, double Lajero chisel and stuff. And back then that cigar was, that was the one everyone was saying it will knock you on your butt and stuff. I was on a business trip with some really cool guys that uh, they worked in other departments for me at my job, but we were all uh, uh, we were all working on this same project together. We made a, a trip out to the where the project site was. And that night we went out for a really good steak dinner, and I was really really full, and we wanted to go hang out at the uh, pool at our hotel and have some cigars. So um, I brought a chisel and I had already smoked a few at that time. I knew I liked them. I knew that I needed something heavy on my stomach back then. Uh, so I, I thought, well, this is the perfect time because I'm really full from that steak. It was heavy. And uh, oh my gosh, that was one of the best cigars I ever had. It just was so nice. Boy, it's, I mean, I'm getting a lot of... Uh, black pepper on my mouth it's kind of I wouldn't say it's let me see okay that was a good draw a lot of black pepper a lot of dark roast coffee and it feels to me right now like they're even there's not one undertoning the other one or something it's just pretty much even right now some char notes uh, behind that The retro hill now isn't so bad. The first couple of draws were pretty rough through the nose, but um, I, I'm kind of excited. It's uh, it's actually come. It's warming up. It's getting some flavors. Uh, those first couple of draws just didn't didn't strike me too well, but now it's um, it, it feels pretty good. Boy, it's really really tight. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's just like a stick. But all right, guys, I'm going to jump into this, do some work, and we'll be back with you in just a little while. Stick around. Hey folks, we are back, and uh, I've smoked quite a bit of it, but I have not thoroughly enjoyed it. I I'll just start with the flavor notes and stuff, because I'm, I'm not really sure what to say. Okay, this has <clears throat> a Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper, San Andreas uh, binder, and then in the filler blend, there's Pennsylvania. Now, Pennsylvania 
is an interesting leaf because it tends to add heavy, spicy, uh, peppery notes. Uh, that's a characteristic of Pennsylvania. And I, I primarily know this from uh, people in the cigar industry that I've heard talk about it and stuff. So it's, it's um, well, I mean, based on how much of it you see on the market in different cigars and stuff, I just think that it's maybe a difficult, ra uh, difficult tobacco to work with in a blend because of those characteristics. You put all three of those together in, in a cigar and you're going to get something that is uh, heavy and peppery and spicy and some other notes in there that I didn't care for. So let me tell you what I got. Like, uh, like I said, the first few draws were pretty rough. Uh, it, it was just... Uh, but, you know, that was only the first few draws. Not a big deal. Then it really seemed, after about a quarter inch in, it really seemed to sort of uh, the in-your-face pepper sort of mellowed out. And, um, <clears throat> and it really looked like it, or seemed like it was going to uh, take a transition and, you know, be a, a decent cigar. It does have lots of flavor, but those flavors are something that, um, that, that you have to like. And I think the best analogy I can make is someone who likes the typical sweetened drinks from Starbucks, coffee-based drinks that are made with their burnt coffee, but a lot of crap is added to make it taste good. Uh, as opposed to just straight black coffee. A lot of people don't like black coffee because it's bitter, it's, it's this and that, and it's just not a, a flavor people like. Um, that's kind of what this cigar was. So at the halfway point, I could not say I was a fan of the cigar. I think the Pennsylvania had a lot to do with it. Uh, and I'm not, not saying it's a bad stick. There is a lot of flavor there. I think it I, it, I think it hit the nail on the head for what Steve Saka was trying to do. Because you have to think, if you're, if you're eating a, a good, hearty steak that's got uh, some good blackened seasoning on it or, or just a good searing on both sides to make it real charry and stuff, then you're going to need something like this to cut through that, especially if you're doing it along with the steak or just after having had the steak. But... There, for me, there were too many char notes in it. The, the charriness was too much. There's no rich flavors like I get typically from Sumatra, from Habano, uh, this type of thing. And, and maybe it's just where I'm at right now in my, in my smoking. I just tend to look more for those flavors and stuff. I've been so impressed with a lot of different things I've had so far this year, like that. And it's it's different. I mean, it, it tastes like a Steve Saka cigar. I, I'm trying, I'm, what I'm getting at is it's just not my flavor profile. And maybe it's because I needed to have something heavy uh, to eat before this or, or whatever. I have not, um, but, but there is a lot of flavor there and there's, uh, and especially in the retro hail, that's where I'm getting uh, flavors that I that I do like. But there's a bit of punch in the nose. <laughs> wow, that kind of hurt. Ugh, I feel like my eyes are gonna water after that one. <laughs> it, I, I would say that if you want to try this stick, have something good and heavy before. Have a steak, have, you know, whatever. Just have something nice and heavy before. Um, and that's about it. I mean, I, I'm still going to smoke it for a little bit. Um, you can get its really, really good construction. The burn was fantastic. Lots of smoke uh, pretty much on every draw. I want to say thank you to some more subscribers I've got. Kind of a long list today. Uh, because I've kind of gone on a tear the last couple days and picked up a bunch of people. So, my new subscribers, 
Rollin Reseda, I think. Kenneth Campbell, 92 Blinky. Ivan Dasanovich, whoops, Denisovich, I said that wrong. Geraldo Gonzalez, Aaron Rice Cakes, <laughs> Scott Schwartz, David Gordon, Julian Lizard, Shane Stark. I wonder if he's in relation to uh, Stark Industries. Uh, Gabe Grimley. This one's hard. This one's really hard. Fatih Hasiosmana. Oh, I can't do it. Fatih, I, I don't know how to say your last name, bro. It's, it's, I tried to practice it, but I have no idea how to say it. Uh, but anyways, thank you. And then Anthony Carlson. So uh, that's, a good, that's a good addition to, uh, to the channel. Everyone, thank you very much for joining High Desert Man. Hope you dig the uh, channel and stuff. Hope you liked it, guys. Until the next video, stay rugged.